Could a bishop's 18-month plan to get a person temple worthy really lead someone out of the church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time watching our show and, and the support that we've felt from so many, and so we appreciate that. And today we have Michelle Biagio here <laughs> Hello. to share your story. Oh. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you for looking, having me. Looking forward to hearing about it, and as we usually do, uh, kind of your little background, where were you born and kind of raised and all that stuff. Yeah. So I was born in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. And growing up, uh, my family moved quite a bit. And yeah. so I spent most of my childhood um, just outside of Las Vegas oh. in a town called Henderson, Nevada. Oh, yeah. I drive through there quite often <laughs> yeah. on the way to Phoenix. And now, um, are your folks active LDS? Yes. They were. Okay. Yep. And so you were born in the Covenant, were you? Or were I was born? not. So oh. my parents were not. Um, I don't think my dad was active mm. at the time my parents were together. He yeah. was LDS, and uh, all of his family is LDS still. Okay. But mom was pretty active. Yes. Yeah. My mom's been incredibly active throughout my whole life. And so we baptized at age eight and all that stuff. Yep, all that fun stuff. Went to primary. And 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 songs. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you wrote a little bit to me and, and talked to about some of the songs that you used to sing and all the ones that you remember yeah, from, remember from primary Book of days. Book women's stories. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then I hope they call me on a mission and that yeah. kind of stuff. I guess now I look back, it, it seems a little indoctrinating. Oh, but, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank the old God for a prophet kind of stuff. But yeah. Anyway, so, and then I guess as you turn 12, you get into young women and do all that kind of stuff. And yeah, but like I said, we moved quite a bit, and so um, That's I always entered, hard, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it was kind of difficult, not really finding roots anywhere. Yeah. Um, but it kind of became the norm for our household. And so when I was 12 years old, we lived just outside of Reno, Nevada. Oh. And that's where I started Young Women's. And everyone was pretty nice, um, pretty welcoming. Uh, I now live in Utah. <laughs> and I moved to Utah when I was 17 years old. And I got to say, the LDS church outside of Utah is much different than in Utah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've heard that a few times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, People seem to be more welcoming, just more friendly outside, outside of Utah, with yeah. the exception of when I was about 16 years old, we moved to a town called Missoula, Montana. Oh, yeah. And um, the young women's there was very tight-knit, and oh, outsiders yeah. were not welcome. Y'all grown up together or something? <laughs> yeah. And... I was really surprised, especially because I had gone to a ward in a smaller town in Montana called Darby, yeah. <laughs> which is like nowhere. And um, people there were really friendly and welcoming, and there must have only been like two or three other girls in the whole young women but there. They were, all... they were very nice yeah. um, and kind and... Um, I did not have that same experience in Missoula. And that's when I started to kind of pull back from the church. Mm. My beliefs didn't waver, but I just didn't want to go and be in that environment yeah. anymore. Where you didn't feel 100% welcome, I guess. Yeah. Huh? Now, you wrote, again, you wrote a few things to me, and so I'm kind of reflecting back yeah. on those. But you had mentioned things like ear piercings and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're wearing dresses to church and those things. When did those things bother you? Um, when you said you started pulling back. When I was about back, a teenager. Were they? Um, I, I've always been a very curious person. Well, and you mentioned hot chocolate, you know, as part of the word of wisdom. And yeah. I've always thought that was kind of funny. I thought that was interesting going to youth events. And during the wintertime, they would serve hot chocolate and a hot apple cider. Yeah. But we weren't supposed to drink coffee. Hot, hot drinks. <laughs> and so that's why I know it's worded hot drinks. And I'm like, mm, yeah. how is this okay? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, it's good that you were thinking. I mean, that's... Uh, but, yeah. uh, Always thinking and questioning yeah. to my mother's dismay. <laughs> yeah. So you end up moving. How long did you live in Missoula then for very long? We lived there for about a year or two. 
And so when I was 17, we moved to Southern Utah. Mm, okay. And um, when we were there, I was not attending the LDS church. Mom, mom was going? She was. She was still going but regularly. But you just didn't feel at that I didn't point go. you didn't want to go, huh? Yep. Yeah. Anything special? Was it just, uh, just didn't? No, the move was, was like kind of out of the blue, oh. and so it rocked our family a little bit. My brother, my older brother, who's two years older than me, stayed back in Montana, oh. and so that was kind of difficult. Um, being in a new place with new people was yeah. hard, um, and we unfortunately lost most of our possessions on the way down. We had to leave behind a lot of our stuff. And then on the trip down, uh, like oh, bags of clothes actually started falling off the car. Oh, and no. so we showed up with really not much, in, not much at all. Oh boy. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, I have a younger sister that's hmm. seven years younger than me. And then my older, older brother. brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so high school and do you go through that, I guess, and, but still not going to church, but yeah, not going to church, but definitely not questioning it. Um, I so never you felt questioned. like the church was true. Do you read the Book of Mormon at this point? Um, I had read chunks of it. Yeah. We had, had read together as a family. Seminary? Had you I actually it? didn't take Did seminary. Take? No. Oh. Um, when I would have started seminary was when we were living in that very small town in Montana, and we actually lived quite a ways out of town in the middle of the woods. <laughs> oh, so they and really so did. we had to ride the bus into school every day and it oh. showed up too late for us to attend Take seminary. Early morning Because you would, yeah, it's not right. available during school hours. Right. Yeah, right. you have to go early. Okay. But again, never any question that the church was true. And what did you think about Jesus during this time? I pictured back. Jesus as a hippie uh, most of oh, my really? life. I thought, <laughs> Jesus because of the was hair sweet and, and kind, and yeah. I thought God the Father was mean and angry and wrathful, and yeah. so I didn't really want much to do with him. Yeah, but uh, Jesus was my guy. <laughs> really, so you had this perspective of of who Jesus was. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I thought, thought of, him of him as my brother. Yeah, as um, your savior, I guess. You, did you uh, think of the, him that way much? I guess, kind of, but. Really, I mean, you have to be your own savior in Mormonism, and so <laughs> That's true. Um, I didn't really think of him that way a whole lot. And we call him savior, but I don't know that we really do the deep thinking about what that yeah. what that really means. Definitely. Well, after high school, you you work and you do you, what do you do? Yeah. So after high school, I got a job um, in a little ice cream shop. <laughs> and that was in delicious. southern Utah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I ended up having my son when I was, I got pregnant when I was 18 and gave birth when I was 19. Oh, okay. And um, I was not in communication with my family during that time at all. And so. Um, were they still living down there with you? Yeah. Ironically, for a while, they were actually living one house over from where I was and they never knew oh. <laughs> that we were living so close together. Oh. Um, I remember one day bumping into my mom in the grocery store and she told me she had gotten married. <laughs> so You didn't even know. Yeah, we weren't oh. in close contact at that time. Well, that's too bad that um, you lost that connection. Did you stay close to your brother or your sister? Um, no, that we didn't either. really stay in touch a whole oh. lot. I talked to my brother a little bit, not at all with my sister because she was so much younger. Oh. And so... Um, after I had Luke, I did talk to my mom a little bit, and I really remember her insisting that I got him blessed in the LDS church. Mm -hmm. And uh, typical. Yeah. I wasn't on board with that at really? all. I um, did not feel comfortable doing that because I could not comprehend why God would have to have you present your child before your ward and have hands placed on them in order for the child to be blessed. 
I felt like, shouldn't God just love him because he's a baby? <laughs> You're quite the thinker, aren't you? <laughs> I just went through stuff, you know. Okay, well, that's what we do. So. Oh, I think a lot of people do well, that. They do. And like I said, my poor mother had to deal with all of my questioning. And yeah, uh, she yeah. never questioned, you know. She was taught specifically not to. Yeah. And so I'm sure she found so, it Probably a lot like sinful, me, but just I was went through it. Yeah. Well, now, do you still believe that the church was true? At that time, yes. Yeah, yeah. And that, I and was that not Joseph questioning. Smith was a prophet, yeah. and that that we had prophets today, and all that stuff. Yeah, but I had always kind of struggled with Joseph Smith, yeah. um, and I don't know why exactly. The story just, just never more questions, I guess. Huh? Yeah, it never really seemed. I don't know. Just something about it rubbed me wrong, and so even when I would get up and bear my testimony during fast Sunday. Yeah. I usually would say, I know this church is true, I know Jesus is my Savior, kind of skip over the yeah. whole Joseph Smith thing. <laughs> Thankful for prophets, maybe, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and maybe, you know, I know our living prophet is true or something. Not to be too personal, did you ever sense that you felt unworthy? Oh, yeah, always. Oh, oh okay. Pretty constantly. My father passed away when I was 12, mm. and that was very hard um so emotional about that i loved him very very much oh. and so it was difficult for me losing him and i felt like he really loved me like very very sincerely deeply loved You're me special little daughter and, i bet yeah <laughs> yeah and um my mom i There's felt distant there, from for a long time thank you yeah. <laughs> And so with his passing, I felt that distance between me and my mother grow. That kind of added to all that yeah. distance, I guess. Yeah. And so I never felt like I was good enough and like I was always trying to earn love. Um, and I never seemed to quite be able to achieve it. <laughs> and I think maybe I based my ideas of God based on my mother and kind of just thought God was distant. Um, and didn't love you because you weren't 100% worthy or yeah, something. Yeah, well, and the funny thing is, is when I had those feelings, I was such a good kid. Other than all the questions, I I really enjoyed um, living up to expectations um, mm -hmm. and following rules. I still really like following rules. I like there being a guideline and structure and order. Know what's expected of you. And <laughs> yeah. And you eventually do go to a bishop and talk about getting to the temple. Yes. And I know we kind of give that, gave that little introduction today, but tell us that story. Well, so Were you feeling I guess like I'll back up a little. I, sure. I was inactive for quite some time, and then after I had my son, I felt like we really needed to, I, I felt like we needed God in our life. Sure. And the only way I knew for that to happen was to go to the LDS church. Yeah. And so um, for many years, we went between being active and inactive. And um, I, I was young and single. And most of my single friends my age were going to single wards. And I couldn't, I couldn't attend <laughs> because I had a small child and they don't have any kind of children's program right. in those words. Those are strictly um, single people. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And so um, I would attend family wards and it was all families <laughs> in those wards. That makes it awkward too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah so I was a lot younger than most of the other people attending. Right. Um, and even the people that might have been closer to my age were still married. Right. They're couples and either with no children um, or small children. And I just didn't feel like I really fit in. Um, but I tried. Mm -hmm. I tried to go and it, church just never felt right. I mean, three hour long periods and trying to wrestle my son who was this crazy hyper and yeah. it was just hard. And so I would go back and forth between being active and inactive and wanting God, but not finding him where I was looking. And um, finally, when I was 27 years old, I realized I needed to get my act together and I needed to Again, be back to the, the church, mother huh? that Luke needed. And yeah. to me, that meant... Um, being a faithful 
member of the LDS Church. Sure. And so I met with my bishop and I got on an 18-month plan to become temple worthy. <laughs> now you said it actually started out at 12 months. Yeah, he told me 12 months to get me there and as I was leaving his office he said, you know, actually, <laughs> let's <laughs> make it 18 months. <laughs> that almost sounds like an 18-month mission or something you know, yeah, the girls, right? <laughs> that the girls go on. And how, what in contrast that is to, to Jesus when he dealt with sinners, mm. go and sin no more. Absolutely. He didn't yeah. give them an 18-month yeah. <laughs> program to come back and see me in 18 yeah. months. Oh. Um, but at that time, I was uh, drinking heavily. I was uh, smoking cigarettes, uh, which is totally against the word of wisdom. Sure. And so it was planned for me to cut those sort of things out of my life. And he figured um, it would take you that long to yes. prove yourself yes. to him and to yourself. <laughs> right, that, yeah. Okay, well, that, I mean, I understand it, but it just so, it's so, it's such a contrast to... Absolutely, you know. yeah. So were you able to quit and do... So, I, uh, while I met with the missionaries and tried quitting smoking, it was the second time in my life that I had tried quitting. And unfortunately, it did not last. Um, I wasn't able to quit drinking or even cut back, not long term anyways. Um, but I did feel this overwhelming nagging that I needed to really understand what I was getting myself into. If you were going to commit to this 18-month program yeah, and really and get go serious, to the temple, go to the temple. That you needed I needed to know. to know what I was representing. Yeah. Um, which is strange because I was raised in the church, and so you yeah, think you'd that think I'd, you'd know everything yeah, and know most at least enough. <laughs> listen to enough sacrament you know, talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Sunday school lessons, but you did something. You started studying. Yeah. So I started. Um, really diving in and reading uh, what was considered LDS resources, um, books that we had at home, and uh, getting into the Book of Mormon and making sure I was attending um, church services regularly. Sure. And um, by chance, one day when I went to my local library, I just happened to come across this book called The Mormon People. And it seemed to be a non-biased historical account of the beginnings of the LDS Church. Kind of factual kinds of stuff. Yeah, there didn't seem to be any kind of opinions in there, um, just events that had happened in chronological order. And as I read that, I became pretty horrified. Um, there was a lot of information that I had never heard about or knew about. What kind of things struck you the most? So it did talk remember? about Joseph Smith's polygamy, um, which is something that I was kind of familiar at the time. Yeah. I had heard that he had had multiple wives. Um, in that book, it said that he had been married to Emma and didn't tell her when he took on another <laughs> wife. And so I That's thought, kind well, of that shocking, doesn't seem isn't quite it? right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Did it mention that he had married women that were already, already married? married? Yeah, that he that was, was sending shocking to me. Uh, husbands on missions and then <laughs> marrying, marrying their wives when they were gone. Yeah, that was tough. Um, it also talked some about Joseph Smith's history before um, starting the LDS Church when he was younger. Um, just some of his family's practices with oh. using divination rods, which are iron rods right. that um, can cross and uncross and... Um, they would, he would seek for treasure and treasure try to seeking. charge people for that, yeah. um, even though he never actually found anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, just all kinds of really strange things. Things that you'd never really like heard that. before. And, and then I heard, a, uh, started reading about that um, they tried starting a bank that wasn't yeah. backed by anything. <laughs> they just yeah. started printing money. Um, that was pretty horrible. Um, and that Joseph Smith had an interest in running for president of the United States. Um, that seemed really bizarre to me, um, that there was a time where they required members to tie the 100% that they were required like to even side kind of their thing, yeah. land over. And so right. um, that was hard to read. Um, it just seemed to paint a picture of somebody who was very uh, narcissistic <laughs> yeah. and... Uh, just self-centered. He just really thought the world of himself. And with your questioning personality, this must have really hit, didn't it? Absolutely. Did you go to somebody and try to talk to him 
I didn't. Or mom even? Did uh, no, you not at that point. Anybody? I I was still looking and searching and just curious. I wanted to know if a lot of what was in there was correct. Um, but a lot of the information I had listed was backed up by um, just tons of resources. Quotes and stuff. Um, that, and know. documents, like how they have a court document that Joseph Smith was charged for being a crystal ball gazer. <laughs> yeah. And it's like that that is something that you can't really refute when it's on like on paper. court documents <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it was just really interesting to me a lot of the things I came across and started opening the door for me looking at things that were considered anti LDS mm. and I came across Sandra Tanner pretty yeah. soon and I loved listening to her talk because all or most of the resources, at least that she was using, were things that we had in our home. Mm. And so there was a quote by Joseph Smith that absolutely horrified me where he talks about um, people ran from Jesus, but nobody's run from him yet. Yeah, Joseph's boast, they yeah. call it or something. And, and that's in a book that was <laughs> on our coffee table. And yeah. I'm, I was just blown away i um was really really horrified and so then once i listened to a lot of sandra tanner stuff and had done a lot of reading on my own um as far as the resources that she had presented then i was like okay let's look at like actual like people that have left the lds church oh. and so i started listening to uh the wilders mm -hmm. lynn wilder and her husband Adams and Road Adams and the, Road, yeah. yep, their testimonies. Yeah. And um, just all kinds of They're random wonderful. people. I came across your testimony oh. videos online. Okay. Um, yeah, there was a couple of different people that I listened to, and it was pretty consistent that these people um, didn't leave because they had been mistreated or were because lazy or they something. were, yeah, lazy or <laughs> it was because sin. of doctrinal yeah. difficulties. There was problems with what the church was teaching. Yeah. I also remember hearing about um, doctrine and covenants and some of the issues in there with what it says about polygamy. Hmm. And so I decided to read it for myself. Yeah. And that was hard. That was really hard. Um, and it just seems the more you learn and the more you study, the more things just kind of unfold and you just wonder, well, how, how was I believing this Absolutely. All this time? Well, and how was this, like when I read about polygamy and Doctrine and Covenants, and it talks about how if Emma doesn't allow Joseph to be polygamous and take on more wives, that she'll be destroyed for eternity. I and know. I'm like, this was in Doctrine, I carried around... <laughs> Doctrine and Covenants in yeah. my Bible set yeah. everywhere. And how did I not read this? Or how did I not know it was here? <laughs> um, that was hard to read. That is amazing stuff. And all of that's what I kind of call the bad news, you know, all that mm -hmm. doctrinal theology yeah. stuff. The good news is about Jesus. How did you kind of come to find Him? So thankfully, <laughs> when I realized the LDS Church was wrong, everything fell apart. Um, of course, I felt this huge shattering in my life, and I thought, you know, if the Book of Mormon is fake and just made up, and Joseph Smith was a liar, then somebody could have made up the Bible, and it could be totally false, yeah. and God could just be created that just is that to next comfort step people. Sometimes. And thank heavens God did not leave me there for very long. I don't know if it was just a couple hours or a day, but it wasn't very long that I was in that darkness. And I clearly heard from God. He told me, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Keep looking. Wow. And That's special. And I felt it put upon my heart to go get a Bible that I could actually read. <laughs> Well, you mentioned that uh, one of your suggestions is that an LDS person take a, a current English kind of a Bible, a ESV or something, and yeah. then bring their King James Version along with it and compare the two and see if the message isn't the same, but it's Absolutely. maybe a little more easy to understand. Yeah, because the different versions, I thought each one was more and more wrong, yeah, depending sure. on <laughs> when yeah. it came well, out. But we don't believe the King James, and we certainly <laughs> don't believe these other ones, yeah. even, even though they've had 400 years to learn stuff. But. but when you compare them side by side, the wording's a little different, but the message is the same. Yeah. 
And so and what if you a don't message. trust it, yeah. What a message. So what did you start thinking about Jesus? Um, went from your older oh, brother to... Oh, he was a lot different. Yeah. <laughs> it's God Isn't in the flesh. Isn't that joyful, though? Yeah. I mean, did you ever think of that? Did you ever understand uh-huh. grace as a Mormon? I never did. I actually, when in 2012, so two years before I came out of the LDS church, I God had put it on my heart then, even as a Mormon, to um, seek out Christian counseling. Hmm. And my mom was very opposed to it. And... I didn't understand why, because to me, I was like, we're Christian. Why Why can't I go to a Christian counselor? Yeah. And she, she knew. <laughs> she knew that it wasn't going to be good. Um, but I went and started seeing this counselor, and he was the one who started talking to me about grace and God's unconditional love. And I was like, God so, doesn't work like that. God doesn't just love me. And he was opening the Bible and, and reading to me, me from <laughs> God's word. And I was just like, it says that in there. <laughs> I didn't know that. I had no idea that yeah. God just loves us. That I thought that was something we had to work very, very hard to earn. Yeah, I think it was such a revelation to me that uh, that Jesus did it. Yeah, that Jesus is enough. Hate it all. And, yeah, and nothing that I could do. All this work that we were doing to go to the temple, and you yeah. were guilty for not being worthy to go to yeah. the temple, and. 18-month plan to get there. Well, and it's really interesting that when I was LDS and I was working for my salvation and for God's love, that I was making a lot of really bad choices because I kept failing. I knew I was falling short. And so it led me to drink and party and do things I shouldn't have been doing. We had less hope. Yeah. Yeah. And once I came to Christ, everything changed. God took... Um, my desire to drink away. He took away my desire to smoke. Oh, is that um, right? Awesome. Yeah, he put it on my heart. And not. I know there's not exactly like a word of wisdom as a Christian, but I know that it was harmful to my body, and especially the quantities I was taking it in it. And it, God just took it away, and that oh, was praise, amazing to me. Praise God. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you're right. This is the temple of God, yeah. and the and God Definitely. can dwell with us. Jesus yeah. can dwell with us, and uh, we don't need that material temple. That, yeah, uh, and it was really people. sad because when I came out of the Mormon Church, my mom was really convinced that I just wanted to sin, and she's like, "You want a free ticket to sin?" And I told her, "Mom, my life is so much better now." than it was when I was LDS. I was sinning more as a Mormon than I do now as a Christian. Yeah, fighting against the law and all that. I guess they weren't happy about your (laughs) your decisions. So I studied for about um, six to eight months before I really realized that for sure Mormonism was wrong. And I, once I came to that realization, I thought everybody needed to know what I knew. And so I rushed to my closest family, to my mom, my sister, my brother. And you thought for sure they were gonna listen, right? Oh, definitely. I thought mine was gonna listen. Yeah, well, because it was information I didn't know before. And so I thought- I'm sure you don't know it. Yeah, Yeah. and then it must be. And, Life-changing and can't for them. you? And won't you look at it? And yeah. can't you look at it? And and they got very yeah. angry. There was a couple of really severe fights with my mom, where she told me oh, that shoot. God was turning his back on me because I turned You've my lost back on the him. spirit. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're darker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we have such joy, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Such freedom, yep. and and just the thrill of knowing who Jesus is, and yeah. and that we're creations that He loves us and. Definitely. It's such a great good news. Well, and knowing that God's always been God, that he wasn't once Isn't a that man. Something? It's just like, yeah. he's so much more than I ever, ever knew. Well, and you can worship that kind of a God. Yes. I mean, yeah. th- just because he's older than we are in Mormonism is the only reason he's God ahead of us. And, <laughs> and when do we get to graduate yeah. to become God? So. And knowing that I don't have to pump out spare babies for eternity is... <laughs> Are you glad of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Michelle, our time's up. You've been a delight. And uh, any last-minute words you'd like to say to any of your family or friends that might, um, might listen to this? I uh, just encourage you to look. <laughs> look, if you are questioning anything, uh, just look it up for yourself. Uh, don't be afraid to question and 
challenge what you've been taught just because it's the only thing you've known doesn't mean that it's true and uh, God loves you. He loves you and he's with you even now. <laughs> Excellent. Did you ever just stop and think what, what in the heck just happened that you become a, a Christian? Uh, have you ever thought of that? I, don't I mean, just think so. This, I feel like you? God's been with me my All the time. entire life, and that it's just been. Well, I was just going to unraveling truth. <laughs> no, that's sweet. I was just going to point out. I I ask people to share their stories a little bit in writing, and here's a whole paragraph of things that Michelle does. Uh, she's worked at a church thrift store. She's taught a class of LDS transitions, a Bridges class, participated in faith after Mormonism. I think Mormon, Christians or Mormons think that we Christians just kind of, oh, now we're saved by grace. We can just go and play and do anything we want. Yeah. But we take it seriously, don't we? Oh, absolutely. And this love that we have for Jesus yep. and our fellow men. And it's because of that love and yeah. knowing that I'm loved that I want to serve God. And want to share. Yeah. Well, thanks, Michelle. I appreciate you coming, and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.